Hello, I'm Alan Palmer. Alan Sose Palmer. Shin Gyo So. Formal, semi formal, informal. I learned many new things as I was preparing for the lecture, including a word for order, order, to keep things in order. And it's Chitsujo. At least I think that's what it is. The book, the books say <laughs> something that chitsujo. It's a new word for me, but the Japanese especially like to keep things orderly. I think it's because there's not much flat land. It's a lot of big hills and some of them are mountains. And uh, have to keep things organized. I don't think we organize to the levels of formality, maybe in language, but objects, I don't think we do that. I think within maybe uh, the church, they might have levels of formality. Formality isn't really a great word either. Uh, usucha, hiradamai, is extremely, extremely formulated, form, it has a form. But shin no gyo daisu is really formal. Well, I'm not sure exactly what that means. Uh, in common practice, the Japanese have traditionally for a very long time, use the brush to write. And the brush really determines how these uh, levels of formality, we'll use that word, even though it's not a great word in this instance. But to write a character, so maybe if we could see the first three characters of T, and maybe I can uh, help explain that a little bit better. So on the left is regarded as Shin, the middle one is Gyo, and the last one is So. The first one on the left is not called Shin, it's called Kai, Kaisho, sort of squarish, rather uh, symmetrical in its own way. But you can tell even in this print form that it Em, uh, emulates, is that the right word? Sort of looks a little bit like brush stroke. It's thick at one end and pointy at the other. And the middle one, gyo, gyo sho, that you can really see the brush more active. And then the so, the last one on the right, the grass character, that's very briefly uh, done out really very interesting. My brushwork is not very good because I started way too late in life, but Shin Kyo So. And that has gone into the uh, separating the aspects of utensils from Shin, which is usually Chinese. And what that means is that it is bronze or porcelain. And gyo is not Chinese, but it has aspects, glaze, glazing with ceramics. And so is unglazed ceramics. Yes, so the, in the tea ceremony, we want to uh, keep things sheen together. So if you're doing, say, a shin temai, there are three levels of shin temai, shin no shin, which only Iemoto does, only. Shin no gyo and shin no so, the sort of highest level that uh, ordinary tea people can achieve is shin no gyo. There are higher temais, but shin no gyo is probably 
the highest level. And it has things that hardly ever change. When you get into the so category, it's more challenging, more difficult, because you have so many different things that come into play. Shinogyo, that chaire must be a certain quality. The chawan must be a certain quality. If it isn't that quality, then it's moved another way, I was going to say down, moved another way uh, to Shinno So. So it depends on the object, the utensils themselves, of how you're going to handle them. Hanaire, flower faces, for example, porcelain and bronze should, according to tradition of Urasenke, be on a certain thin board, unless the floor of the tatami, uh, sorry, the floor of the tokonoma is tatami, then it needs a board. We've touched on all of these things before. So let us uh, move on. The picture that we see here is uh, my tea room set up with uh, Shin Daisu. Shin Daisu is that object that stand, the baseboard and the heaven board. The baseboard is the Ji Ita, the earth board, and the upper shelf is the heaven board. The tea container on top is in heaven. Tea is heaven sent. The little box, the kogo, is porcelain, and it was a prize winner. And it starts out in heaven. And the haboki, the feather. And then on the ji ita is the mizusashi on the right and the shakutate, kensui, futaoki, and the hishaku and hibashi. I've come to the conclusion that those objects represent uh, their metaphors for the furo. That's where the furo would have been when we are using the furo. And we know that uh, furo is earth, water, fire, metal, and wood. But the principles are earth, water, fire, wind, and the void. So the kensui, symbolic of earth, in fact, the jiita is marked with the trigram for earth where the kensui sits. And the shakutate, is on the trigram for heaven. So we have power over fire and water out of heaven. Inside the kensui is the futaoki, and it's a cylinder, and it goes theoretically around the neck of the shakutate, and then the lid of the mizusashi. All this can net nest together, but the kensui is earth, and the shakutate, that is the curious thing. Why is it bulbous at the bottom and narrow at the top? It doesn't have to be according to physics, but we'll go into that. I'll go into that a little bit later. So the shin daisu, and you can use it in many different ways. You don't always have to do shin no gyo daisu or shin no so. You can, but you can use other utensils. Often the utensil should be a matching set. But, uh, and then turning to the row, this is an amidado. It should, to be in the most formal way, have a flange around the outside. That's make, that is what makes it a shin nari gama. This amidado is lacking that uh, flange that would have rested on the very large furo. So in the uh, tokonoma, we'll just touch it briefly. Tokonoma is a picture of, of Bukan and his sleeping tiger. And uh, this is one of those 
wonderful eBay specials that we know and love. And um, I'm a tiger. I sleep more than I used to, I think. But Bukan, we'll go into that a little bit later. And because it is horizontal, uh, I can put the Hanaide in the center. It's a tatami on the floor of the tokonoma. So the Hanaide is on a Yahazu Ita, the arrow knock. So we'll get into those a little bit later. Uh, yes, we're in the Machiai, and the Machiai has uh, just the thing that is sort of the inspiration for the tea of the day. Uh, this was written by Dai Sosho. This was given to me uh, a short while ago when I was uh, given a special honor from Urasenke. Wa ki fu. So let me try again. Wa ki ju fuku jo zu. Right, harmonious atmosphere bears longevity and good fortune. Imagine that, a world in harmony. Uh, this is the wa of wa ke se jaku. I don't have a tobacco bone in the machiai. I usually do, but this is a formal event. Today in uh, Japan at Higashi Honganji is one of the most important observations of the year, and it's the anniversary of the death of Shinnan, who was the founder of Jodo, Shinshu, sometimes just called Shinshu. Extraordinary, Higashi Honganji and Nishi Honganji. Wonderful places. When you are in Kyoto, you must go to see both of them. They're quite nearby. However, uh, on the off chance that it would be chilly, I have a tobacco bowl. And uh, sorry, not tobacco bowl, a te aburi. I'm looking at the, uh, the charcoal burning. Looks like something dreadful has happened to the ash, but uh, it's kind of hard to get in there and make it kind of neat. I'm sure some Japanese person could. Uh, this is uh, an American potter who made this. I've had it for many years. Hi, Connie. Uh, many years. And uh, when I saw it in a uh, secondhand store, she had a lot of her works. This is uh, Arla Lakovitz. And this was quite a few years ago, and I thought, what a wonderful te aburi. When I first came to America, I wanted to get lots and lots of American or Western things to uh, bring into the tea ceremony. Well, that's a challenge. There are things that just are unavailable. They don't exist. So when I saw this wonderful piece by Arla, uh, I thought, what a great te aburi. And it's very much that form. Uh, her other works were very abstract. Uh, I, I don't know if she had any reputation outside of, I think it's absolutely wonderful. And it gets very warm. That little piece of charcoal there really does warm up the whole thing. So this is out of the kindness of uh, the host to provide something warm, to warm the hands. When the tobacco bone is there, one should pick up the hi'ire to feel the warmth of the hi'ire. So don't ever have a cold one there. For class, you might tell them why it's there, but to warm the hands. Warming the hands, yes, but handling fire, handling fire. So let's go back to the uh, tokonoma to the jiku. So we've uh, seen that it is uh, Bukan, 
and the sleeping tiger. They are close friends with Kanzan and Jitoku. They are more familiar than these two characters. Uh, one sweeps and uh, one rakes. And they are uh, quite lazy because they're enlightened. They don't need to uh, work on Satori much. And they're often shown together, the four of them sleeping, called the four sleepers. But Bukhan is wide awake. And that puzzles me. Uh, if we could look more closely at the fabrics that are uh, part, uh, you have to sort of take a really close look, but the ichimonji um, is the gilt right next to the paper. Uh, also, when I took this photograph, I realized that there was another stamp. I saw the red stamp, but I didn't see the, uh, the other stamp. It looks, uh, well, I just didn't see it. And I, I should uh, reprimand myself because I'm always uh, saying to myself when uh, the person on Antiques Roadshow is told there's a signature, oh, I never knew there was a signature. And so, I reprimand myself for not paying closer attention. Uh, we can see the signature there. And this, of course, is a complex thing uh, that is, uh, I suddenly blanked on that. It is uh, Avine. Avine. And uh, he is part of the Kano line. He's not a Kano, but he is part of the Kano uh, line of painters. And there is one that was about a hundred years ago and one who died in 1984. And I think this is the one who died in 1984. Uh, it's in the notes. So, uh, A. Dean. Uh, yes. Nothing is simple. If it's worth looking into, it's not simple. Uh, if you can look very, very closely between the Ichimonji there is a little uh, bit of fabric in, in, in a formal, a sheen mounting. The reason I have this is that it's close to sheen. Hanging scrolls are organized according to sheen, yo, and so, but there are many subsects of uh, sheen, yo, and so. And if the uh, fabrics, three fabrics, on a Xin scroll, which is usually Buddhist, we have uh, all, all of the three fabrics are brocade, they're gold brocade. But this is a little bit less than that. And uh, Chu Mawashi, really absolutely beautiful Chu Mawashi. This must have been out for, uh, out in the air for a long time, because I'm quite certain that that paper the central paper would have been white. And everything has gotten kind of a uh, tobacco incense, let's call it incense, maybe some incense smoke on it. But also a little bit closer look at the ten chi, the earth part. This is the lower part of the hanging scroll. There, that's a wonderful damask of uh, probably a kind of peony. Peonies are a medicine, not the flower, the root. And there are fields, acres and acres. I don't think they call them acres in uh, China, but fields and fields and fields. Also, when you get the uh, study guide, you can take a closer look at the brocade, the Ichimonji, because those most of those little motifs are animals. And I've never seen that before. Little charming animals quite extraordinary. So the Hanaire, moving on to the Hanaire, is a kyozutsu, a sutra scroll container. Kyozutsu. Kyo is sutra and zutsu is a cylinder. That's the lid there. Some people put the lid there, some people do not. Uh, the sutra would be put into the scroll container and then put the lid on it and then interred with the uh, 
with the body. This is part of the burial. I know it may seem strange, but Ikebana people love to put, especially lotuses in this uh, style. Absolutely beautiful. If you look rather closely, you can see that the tsumami, the knob on top is the flaming jewel. Quite extraordinary. And now, Shin, Gyo, and So. This is Shin, and the board is also. Uh, again, if you look closely, you can see there's a little uh, indentation uh, around the perimeter. And I'm quite certain that that is inspired by the Shumidan, the altar, the Buddhist altar, that has the profile of an hourglass. It's tapered down to the middle and then tapers out. So it's a, uh, it looks like an hourglass shape. Yahazu, arrow knock. And now going on to a gyo hana ide is by Richard Milgram, celebrated potter in Kyoto. He was a student of mine in Boston a number of years ago. This is uh, typical of Kyoto style ceramics, uh, Japanese style ceramics, I should say, which influenced the world. Uh, Bernard Leach and uh, English and uh, Yamada Japanese, they were known worldwide and uh, influenced. Uh, Leach was greatly influenced by Japanese pottery. Interesting forms. Potters like to experiment. They're traditionalists, but they like to experiment. This is three sided and uh, has a glaze, light and dark, in the style of Chosen Karatsu, influence of Korea. And the edge of this usuita is called Hamaguri Ba, clamshell edge, because this is sort of a show and tell. It comes to a point, and I don't know how to describe that, because it's not beveled, it's rounded. So uh, it looks like the edge of a clamshell, top and bottom, hamaguri ba, uh, board, uh, edge, sorry, edge. So that's gyo. So anything that's glazed, well, within reason, glazed hanaide would go on this style board, the gyo board. And then moving on to uh, a bizen, this is wet, the board is wet. And this poses a bit of a question for me. You don't wet the floor of the tokonoma, but incidentally, when you put the unglazed hanaide in the tokonoma on the wooden floor of the tokonoma, the hanaide is wet. So it does transfer some water. But in this instance, the sugi board, the cedar board, uh, that has the same clamshell edge as the gyo board, but this is plain wood and it's made wet. These pictures I'm rather proud of. I'm not much of a photographer in my life. It took too long for me to take enough pictures to have the film developed, but uh, I have this wonderful camera and I took a lot of images to get the one I liked, and I'm not crazy about this one either. Uh, this is a Bizen pot that uh, I cannot read uh, the sign, uh, the, accompany, uh, the writing on the box, I can't read it. And I sent pictures of it to Bizen uh, Ceramics Organization, and they couldn't uh, know it either. But it's a treasure for me because it was given to me a number of years ago by Mori Sensei, and it was her father. So I, I cherish this wonderful, wonderful Hanaide. So there is another style, uh, baskets, 
and baskets, kago, the water is held in a container inside. So it doesn't need a board for the basket because the basket plays the role of the board. Japanese baskets, this, this is a rule of, of uh, chabana, tea flowers, flowers for tea, that some baskets are made wet. There is a very famous one that's a creel that was admired by Rikyu and it would hold fish <laughs> caught from the katsuragawa, it's called the katsurakago, and it would be wet because the fish are uh, need to be kept alive. So uh, they're usually made wet, but treasured Chinese baskets never would be wet. And the uh, water container would often be a piece of bamboo that is uh, that looks maybe for some uh, like bamboo, but it's actually a mug from my childhood uh, when we ate most of our meals from uh, a ceramic ware called Francoma, and that is a Francoma. It's a sh it's like a mug, but it doesn't have a handle. So it's a kind of a hidden secret there. And now the next picture I found in an Urasenke document and was thrilled, absolutely thrilled to see it. This is Tantansai. This is the father of Hounsai, the grandfather of Zabosai. And he's doing Shin, his the tea presentation that he is doing is Shin no Gyo, to the best of my knowledge, using absolutely wonderful, wonderful utensils. Shin Daisu, the Furo, ceramic Furo, Shin Narigama, most formal kettle, and then the Kaigu is. Karakane. But he looks quite young here. I don't know how old he is. There wasn't much detail given with the picture. But this is such a lesson. Um, traditionally, there aren't, there should not be too many visual records of Temai. But here's Tantan Sai, so I think he wanted the world to know. Uh, for those of you who study tea, you can see how close that futa oki is to the edge of the ji ita. The lid is on it. The kensu is right to the edge. There's so much that we can learn from this. The uh, furosaki byobu, there is some area behind that. Uh, this is in tototsai. Totot, I easily get off track. Totot is really it's a sound, of not reprimand, but close to being a reprimand. Pay attention. It's one of Sotan's uh, names, Tot Tot Sai. And behind there is uh, an opening uh, part of uh, the extension of the area of the Tokonoma. And the Dora is hanging there that was given to Rikyu by uh, Toyotome Hideyoshi. So that's why there's a Furosaki Byobu there. Uh, if that were a solid wall, as in the classic Yojo Han, there would be no need for a Furosaki Byobu. The Furosaki Byobu is to keep someone from walking into that area. So if it's a solid wall, no Furosaki Byobu. There'd be white paper on the wall close to the floor. So absolutely great picture. We know it's summertime because they have those pseudo there, reed doors. Absolutely marvelous, marvelous picture. So into my room now, this is uh, the Shin Daisu in my room with uh, bronze kaigu, Rikyu looking on. Another one of my great, well, actually all of my things are great treasures. They may not uh, 
be great in the world what they are to me. Heaven board, earth board. From the host's perspective, the far right corner is spring, the post is spring, near right is summer, far, uh, sorry, the near left is autumn and the far left is winter. So that whole side, the whole right side is spring and the whole front is summer. We should be in the south looking north. But taking up the hishaku, the host is metaphorically transferred, metaphorically moved to the north. Oh, there is so much going on here. And now to take a look at the kaigu. The Mizusashi on the left probably came from a temple. It might be Muromachi period, I don't know. The uh, dealer in uh, Kyoto, good friend, good associate, I should say, very friendly, always wonderfully uh, welcoming when you went into his shop. The last time I saw him several years ago, he came to say hello, but he was uh, quite infirm, but he wanted to say hello. They were very happy. They remembered when I bought this piece uh, on one of the side streets down in either Shimonsen, one of the streets that lined with uh, antique dealers. Be very careful when you go into them because not everything is as it seems. Uh, there's a mark on the lid, and uh, I rather like it. It looks a little bit like a petunia. And that's the front, as far as I can tell. But extraordinary work of uh, bronze. The Tensui is signed Nakagawa Jo Eki. And one of the celebrated, I should say, the higher level teacher not Shingyo or so, but a higher level teacher said, mm, the form is not quite right. Well, the form is not quite right, maybe in the eye of the beholder. Uh, to me, it's Nakagawa Joeki, uh, one of the important craftsmen of uh, the Sen families. They're called the Jishoku, the 10 artisans that supply metal work. And the present uh, Joeki is making things just like that. Uh, the form slightly different. The Shakutate, I tell you, something happened today that completely changed my mind. And it's slightly obscured, but if some of you have Kaigu and it's Karakane, or this has also been the very same design has been copied in ceramics. There's no reason why it's roundish at the bottom and slender toward the top, unless it's meant to be something. And I think the B that it is trying to is a combination of spherical and linear. That's not quite the right word. But in and yo, the in swell, the spheric, semi spherical base, and the narrow being the yo, in and yo. I'll mention that a little bit further, but pay attention to that, what I would have called in my art history memory, those are called lappets. Looks like a spearhead but aiming down. So the futaoki, uh, that's a napkin ring. When the West came to Japan, Japan went very Western, not cowboy hats and boots, but very Western with napkins. Napkins are not necessarily a part of the Japanese uh, way of eating. 
uh, shibori before the meal, which is wet, cool in summer and warm in winter. You sort of wash up, wonderful. Some people uh, who don't have a uh, roji with a chozubachi and uh, that they, in the, when they're in the waiting room, they will have shibori there to wash, purify the hands, which I think is a wonderful idea. And it has a dragon on it. And we don't have it today, but you, those of you who have the former uh, illustrations, that the jiita of the daisu, the futaoki goes on the trigram of the ekikyo, the I Ching, goes on the trigram for lightning. And I thought, well, that's kind of strange. But the character for lightning for this sheen, a different sheen, that sheen has rain and a dragon. So I've had this futaoki and I've used it quite often, but I had another piece that I used for the futaoki because it was taller and fulfilled that 1.8 sun kane jaku measurement, 18 ju hachi. So the dragon lightning futaoki has joined permanently the uh, kaigu. Now, these are created now and have been as a set. This is not a set. These are things that I have uh, gathered together through my several years of uh, tea. And now to a picture that I have to even alter now as we speak. This is the shakutate. I, I can't believe that I didn't see it before. Uh, if you can look at me, if you can see me, I will try to show you this lappet, this lappet right here. That's what that's called, a small lap. Boy, that's even complicated too. And there are three of them around, one, two, three, lappets, and they're sword blades. Sometimes they're called leaves, leaf, because it looks like a leaf. Some of them are intent, I mean, intentionally made to look like a bamboo leaf, but it's a sword blade. And What's a sword blade doing on that? Was it originally a flower container? Was it a vase? Looks like a vase. A vase, if it costs more than $10. Uh, but if we could go down, uh, Tanya, to the next slide, which is the futaoki, sorry, the sh shakutate that's round. Um, yes, this one. Um, Many of them, including uh, very uh, important collections, we'll call it that, that this really emphasizes the circular aspect of it, the in part, and this uh, straight line here of the neck is uh, very yo. It's, it's still hollow but a futaoki is hollow, so that's yo. And in this set, this is, this shakutate is part of a set. The set has the futaoki that slips inside this, the neck. Others, although they don't usually, slip on the outside of it. So this is in and yo. So this is water and fire. This is water and fire. And let's go back up to the 
shakutate. And that ladle handles water and those hibashi handle fire. So the hishaku and the hibashi are differentiated, undifferentiated yin and yang, yin and yo. They represent the flaming jewel. Those are ginkgo nuts on the top for shigo-san, which is a ceremony at Shinto shrines for children of three, five, and seven. But count the, the sticks, we'll call them sticks. There's three of them. Three of them. There are three lappets. Is this intentional? Now let's go back down a little further a little further to two pictures. Uh, the uh, let's have yes. Well, this is a this is a good one to get to the other one. This it took me some efforts today because this is brand new, ladies and gentlemen. This is brand new. Look at the bottom. It's got lappets coming down, rather like the shakutate, and the top has the other blades, we'll call them, other blades. So it's, in this case, there are four blades being held together. Well, what, there's something else that is this concept. And this is the next slide, please. This, this is a Vajra that is open. So it's a weapon. This is the lightning bolt of Indra. This is ceremonial. But the Shakutate is the bottom. And the hishaku and the hibashi are the top, but they're not weapons. Isn't that absolutely unbelievable? So the shakutate is half of a vajra, and I'm I'm holding up. I'm holding up. This is my ceramic with the tsubo tsubo openings in it, but this, <laughs> this is what this is, isn't it? This is my Vajra and it has four uh, outside tines and one inside, which is in fact the original, this uh, rod in the center. I guess you can see it better against my uh, black jacket. These lappets here, these are coming out of the mouths of uh, sea creatures. I don't know. <laughs> it looks like it to me. Anyway, you think about that and let me know. Good. Now, moving on to the Kogo. There was in the Edo period, a uh, contest of blue and white porcelains, porcelains, including blue and white, uh, called Sometsuke, against ceramic, uh, not porcelain, but ceramic. There was a big contest in the Edo period. And they gave the results of the, what was the best, whatever that means. Um, and it was given in the style of a sumo contest with the ozeki at the top. Ozeki was the highest rank until Yokozuna. That became higher, but ozeki. And the ozeki of that contest was the first of these uh, style here. Uh, wayside 
Chapel. Tsujido. Absolutely charming. This was a gift. It can be used as a futaoki. You turn over the top, put it back on to the uh, base. Yeah. A gift of a friend. So moving down now, the, our, our slides are going in the uh, upward direction of the uh, haboki and the Edozumi. I think they're the same thing, the same concept, but in and yo. I may have shown something like this before, but I, I got very, very interested in it again. Feather, left feather for the row. And it's three feathers. There's two about the same size, sandwiching a smaller one on the inside. So there are three. They are bifurcated. And the edizumi are bifurcated. But they're open. So we have in and yo. It works more uh, happily with furo because in row we put in four, but the concept is there. This, this change from furo to row is uh, always uh, filled with questions. And then moving on to the hishaku and the hibashi. 9.5 kane, the handle of the hishaku. Uh, this hishaku uh, is the, the handle is the same length as the hibashi, but in the kujira style. So I'm looking at the clock and I realize that uh, we have to move on. Uh, let me move on to two pictures, which are again, should be mulled over. And it is, uh, well, they are Iyamoto. And this is Iyamoto making tea in a temple using the Shing Daisu. Fuxa, we're all used to our Fuxa being purple, purple for men, uh, and red, the cousins of red. Uh, the purple is in to complement the yo of men, and the red is yo to complement the in of women. But the real true fuxa is white. And in this wonderful picture, uh, ho, this is, this is Ho Unsai several years ago, I believe, a couple of years ago. There's so much we can learn from this picture if you've never seen an offering tea. Uh, the fuxa, the white fuxa is uh, below the kensui to his left side. It's almost, uh, well, it's the low, it's on the tatami, but it's a white cloth folded up on the tatami. That is his white fuxa. Uh, he's wearing a mask because when the tea is exposed to the air, the Teishu here, uh, Hounsai, Dai Sosho, he's wearing a mask so that his breath will not pure, uh, uh, affect in any way the tea. People wear masks in Japan. When I first went there in 1970, anybody who wasn't feeling quite well wore a mask. These pictures you need to mull over. We talk about Shin and Gyo and So. The, it depends on the circumstances. That white object on the top, the Tenita, that's a Natsume. It's plain wood and it's lined in, in this instance, it's lined in gold because uh, Daisosho is making koicha. And you see to the right on the 
Tenita, there's a white protuberance, a white little hill. Well, that's the sheaf goat. It's white, a kind of, uh, I wanna say boucle, but maybe some of you don't, <laughs> or maybe I'm using it in the wrong way. It's crepe, it's kind of uh, crinkly. And its cord is purple. Purple. The stitches that hold it onto the uh, bag are purple. Why? Well, the Usucha container, not here, but the Usucha container has a white shifku and it has a red cord with red stitches holding it onto the bag. So purple is in and koicha is yo. So purple, that's why all of these shifkus, well, many of them are lined in purple with purple cords because it's in contrasting, complementing the yo of the koicha. Usucha is red because it's the red is yo and usucha has more water than tea, so it is in. Uh, next picture, please. And this will be Iemoto, Todai Iemoto, now. And you can see more clearly his white fuksa on his side. And he's making several bowls of tea. He's at a Shinto shrine. And the Daisu is plain wood. The Shinto tends to be plain wood. Buddhism tends to be lacquered. So many aspects. Look at that shakutate, it's the dogu. Uh, it has a spherical bottom and a rather uh, cylindrical uh, neck very much in the manner of my thoughts on it being a manifestation of water and fire. You can pour over these on uh, your time. Uh, moving on to a chaire, this is from Korea. It's a contemporary piece and it could be used in a shin temai or as a karamono. Karamono, yes, means Tang China, but Kara was also a kingdom in old, an old kingdom in Korea. Chashaku here, Shin, ivory. That's a really long story about why it's ivory. The mother of the Buddha had a dream of a white elephant with six tusks. And this ivory Chashaku is ideally six sun. Uh, going on to knots. Now, this is my supposition of the knots on shifku. When there's tea in the jar, this is the shifku for that uh, Korean jar, Saladon. Usually they're dark brown, but this has the knot that shows there's tea in it. And this one, the three leaf clover like the Mitsuba shows there is no tea in it. And I am of the opinion until today that this knot, the permanent knot, the uchidome, might be the so knot. Now I'm kind of making this up, but I also realized that maybe it isn't that one at all. You know how when you are starting to tie the knot, you make like a figure eight before you make the bow or you make the loop over the uchidome. Maybe that's the so not because it because it can go either way. It can go either shin or kyo. And moving on, chawan. Now chawan fairly obvious about shingyo so. On the left is a song bowl. maybe around 1200 
1100s, maybe earlier, because it has that little lip on the inside to catch the tea particles that uh, are not edible. They just flavor the water and the tea particles stay in the bowl, still powdered, but in granular form. You realize that tea leaves are inedible. Chewing up the leaves of a camellia, we don't usually do that. There is a, a relative, uh, tea camellias are relative, and there is another sacred leaf to Shinto, and that is sakaki. They're a little unsure about the actual meaning of sakaki, sakaki but they are offered at Shinto shrines. Well, what does the Shinto shrine do with all those leaves? Do they throw them out? Do they burn them? I don't know. I've asked a couple of Japanese friends if they know what the priest or the shrine does with those uh, leaves. Well, I found out in Chinese medicine that they dry the leaves grind them up to a powder and make a kind of tea in quotes. It's good for various bodily functions, this sakaki tea. So <laughs> now the raku bowl, probably gyo, this is made for the temple of Ginkakuji. I got it as a souvenir after visiting and the one on the bowl on the right is a classic Kyoto style bowl, uh, quite thin, always have to be very careful with your hot water going in there, but obviously for usucha only. Raku, chawan, koicha, yes. I'm not sure what the, what the thick, thin aspect of tea in a temple, I'm not sure if it's koicha or usucha, it's just tea, and it's rather thin in the yotsu gashira, the four heads, a rite that was uh, brought by Eisai back from his study of uh, Zen in China. They're called chan. So probably these bowls could be classified as shin gyo. And so uh, moving on to the song bowl, in a shifku, it's fitted, so it's a shifku, on its die. And they drink at the uh, rites, the yotsugashira, they drink tea out of a conical temoku shaped bowl with the die. And I'm going to do that uh, today in our tea drinking, but I wanted you to uh, see the perhaps sheen bowl in its shifku in our informal but highly uh, complicated to learn is chabako and the tea bowl is wrapped in a shifku there as well. Moving on to the shifkus, I want to show you the knots or the bows, they're actually bows on the daitemoku on the left that's called the Takara Musubi, the treasure knot. And that is the, it has tea in it knot. And I think that Takara Musubi knot is a drawing, an outline of the Chaire in its shifku with its bow and its uchidome, don't you? And now here's, here's something for uh, to mull over. The next slide is a temoku bowl on a dashi buksa. Dashi buksa. We usually use a kobuksa, the small one, but originally I believe they used, because this is the old fuksa, just like kobuksa means old fuksa. And the small kobuksa was created not that long ago, oh, 100, 150 years ago, maybe. Well, 
the dashi books is doubled. I, I have it situated so that you can see the layers. So there are eight layers and there are four corners and four times eight, I think is 32. And that's the number of petals on that Buddhist lotus stand. And the figure well, is Amida, I've left him off, but you can see sort of dots, dots between the petals, just above the petals. There are four layers of eight petals, as opposed to eight layers of four petals. And look at that flaring hane. Hmm. And Amida, not, not shown here, but Amida is sitting on a lotus, and that's the Chawan, and tea in it would be the seeds of the lotus tea. The Fuxa that was there is uh, for the 700th, sorry, the 400th anniversary of Rikyu and absolutely ravishing fabric. It's a shoha. No one knows how to spell or put kanji to shoha. So you can do that. But tsubo tsubo mon, the three Iemoto of the San Senke, the three San families contributed to the design of this for the 400th anniversary of Rikyu's death. This was made by Yuko and put together by Toksai. And moving on to Kobuksa, Shingyoso on Kobuksa. The first one on the left is a Donsu. One might think that the gold would be higher, but gold is, uh, is actually gold and it's, uh, it's on paper and it may scratch. The, priceless object within. So the shin fabric for the kobuksa is don'ts. This is again another shoha. This is a wonderful gift from Christy Bartlett in California. The one on the right, blue, is fukuju kinnan. It is a kinnan. It's gold. That's gold leaf on paper. Sometimes it's gold thread. One might think that the rabbits uh, is gold, but it's actually gold thread, which is different from a kinnan. Roundels, fuku ju, those are the kanji, the characters, fortune and long life. And done in a rather more formal style because it's not brushwork. There are actually six styles of kanji characters. Three of them are brush. So moving on to two more, the Nishiki and the Kanto. This is uh, inspired by a Mongol fabric. Mongols were in charge of China for a very long time. And Hideyoshi had a jacket that had a similar design, animals. That is a Nishiki brocade, but not with gold. It might sometimes. Some fabrics have all all three, four styles going in it. And the one on right is uh, a canto put together by Glenn Sore Pereira making kobuksas. This is a fabric that is identified with Benke. Benke had a kimono that was plaid according to some theories, the some ideas. And so moving on to another Tenmoku bowl, this was uh, made for the 700th. I started saying 700 earlier. This was made for the 700th anniversary of the death of Shinnan. And it has a stamp on it of Higashi Honganji. And that's the bowl that uh, would be used to offer tea to uh, Shinran's spirit. That's a 
the stand is plain wood, kayaki, kayaki, not kiri, kayaki. And it's used in our presentations of kinin. Kinin were the only ones who could afford the rather costly Chinese tenmoku style bows. And then fuksa and chakin. The shin chakin and the fuksa were the same size, one shaku each. But the fuksa was hammed on three sides. The selvage on the fuksa, uh, sorry, on the chakin fabric, it's hemp. I've been saying linen, it may be hemp. Um, the top edge, top edge and the bottom edge, that's the selvage, the self edge. I only learned that a couple of years ago. But the side edges are hemmed. They would, they're cut from the bolt. But they were originally the same size. But because they are fabric, they are measured with kujira jaku. So they started out as hasun. The fuksa, the selvage, has been turned in. So, and just to show you for fun is the, uh, the chaki, usually for usucha, it can be used for koicha. At the end of the, at the end of the shin no gyo daisu temai, that temai, this is put out on a piece of paper showing that uh, usucha will not be served in that same room. The height of the usuki is 1.8 sun kujira, just like the natsume. And from the thread, that's a shin chasen, has white thread. And from the thread to the tine tips is the sun hachibu kujira. Uh, Moving on to the dishes. One is actually a food dish taken from the Buddhist service, which is also the shin chaji. And the chakin is put on a dish along with the cha sen for the formal shin no gyo daisu temai. Also in that offering tea, they use the senzara, the whisk dish. And then the chashaku, shingyo so in our chashaku, we have two shin. Ivory is shin, that's a little short. That ivory should be a little longer. Even with the bend, it's not quite six. The gyo is next, uh, sorry, that's the shin chashaku. It has no fushi, so it is shin. And the next is the gyo, it has the fushi at the end. Tembushi and the Nakabushi is so. And the Shaku is there just to show you. Our Mizusashi, I learned some, Mizutsugi, sorry. Uh, I learned something quite uh, surprising, really, that the, it's on its side, it didn't fall over. It has three feet, and one foot is the front. The handle is the front. The spout is not the front. The spout is, the, is directed toward where you're going to pour, and that's higher than you are. And it has two feet at that side, because if these feet were taller, you can more readily, more easily pour with two feet balancing the vessel as opposed to one foot. And this is the same thing that occurs with incense burners. You're pouring the incense to the higher spirit. So it's one in the front and two in the back because it's easier to pour. Of course, you're not pouring the incense. And our next lecture, if, I, if I'm, still alive and well as I am now, 
uh, is about Shinto and holidays. And this is a futaoki that I made with the kind help of Stephen Murphy of uh, Tori, Tori. So I think it's time for questions and answers and for us to get our tea together. Uh, to have your sweet, I'm going to start eating my sweet and uh, we'll take a tour in a moment when I uh, go make tea at the Daisu. But I'm going to have my tea sweet now. Yokan, uh, you can eat and talk at the same time, but I think I'm still being seen. Am I still being seen, Anthony? You are. Yes, this is the yokan. Whoops, it's going to fall. You've seen it before. This is yokan in a box, just like you would get it at a temple. Except you don't get yokan at a temple, you get konyaku and a sweet. So I think that this yokan with a rat in it, gorgeous rat design, uh, that it's gyo. The sheen sweet are these pink and white sugar cubes that you get from your shrine. This is from Ota Jinja. And they suggest you put it in coffee. But this is the first sugar in Japan was given from shrines and temples. And it's red and white, in and yo. And at the Yotsugashira, you get shin okashi. That's why it's shin, because it comes from a shrine, happens to be Shinto. And these little rakugan, that's our shin sweet. So our yokan is probably gyo. And then the so sweet is anything else. That's probably so say senbei, which one of these days I'm going to show you how to make them. We'll see how that goes. But I'm going to eat my yokan now. So Anthony, how about questions? Yes, sensei. Um... I, uh, we have a few questions. Uh, one was a fascinating link uh, between the Vajra and um, the Shakutate. And uh, thank you for that. Could you possibly go further into uh, why there's the importance between linking the Vajra and the Daisu? Yes, I'm holding up the Chasen and uh, my Vajra. I I have illustrated on my Facebook page, which I never use, that two chasens represent the Vajra. Well, the chasen is what causes the tea to happen, like lightning. Lightning causes things to happen. We could not make the tea as we do make the tea without whisking it together. The chaire on the gyo for uh, the hake bon, the chaire is on the trigram for thunder and lightning. So the tea itself is thunder and lightning. And the lightning bolt of Indra or Taishaku Ten in Japan that removed the veil that was hiding the world. And the tsuyu at the ends of the futai on the hanging scroll, those are vajra too, causing everything to come into existence. Uh, there also is a little more information in the study guide. So those of you who aren't getting the study guide, it is available <laughs> through our producers of uh, Anthony and Tanya. Thank you, Sensei. Uh, another question is, um, if the Shin Chakin is the, the large Chakin, it, is the, the normal Chakin that we use So or Gyo? Probably other. Hmm. Probably, pro the reason that I would call it Shin Chakin is because it's used in the Shin Temai. 
There are little chakin that you may have uh, brought with you to wipe the uh, chawan rim drinking koicha. So okay. that could be the so chakin. I don't know. Thank you. Um, but but that shin chakin plus the half, let's call it the half chakin. If you put those two together, that half chakin is put on the mizutsugi to use when you replenish the mizusashi. That half chakin, the one we use ordinarily. So if you put those two together, that foot and a half, it isn't, that shaku and a half, remind me, Anthony, that that's the size of the purificator in the Catholic mass. It's a rectangle that's a foot and a half. Uh, I have my, they're here somewhere, my shaku, because we have a major revelation to share. But first, a question, Anthony? Yes. Um, wondering where the Korean chawan fit in Shingyo Seoul. It's continental. It might as well be Chinese. <laughs> Don't tell the Koreans that. Um, it's continental. It's, uh, it's Shin. Now, when you hang a flower container on the tokobashira or you hang it from the ceiling, regardless, regardless of what its material is, it's so. It has to sit because it represents the water flower container that's on the altar of the Buddhist temple. The tokonoma is inspired by the Buddhist altar. Well, on the on the topic of Hanaide, uh, you showed us that nice Richard Milgram Hanaide as gyo, and is that just because it's uh, glazed ceramic, or is yeah. Yes. Okay. One might say, well, shouldn't it be something else because it's American? Well, his wife is Japanese. She was a classmate of mine. He lives in Japan and sometimes Boston. Uh, I think because it was made in Japan that it, <laughs> that it might be regarded as Japanese. I am sure Richard would think of himself as being rather Japanese. He's very American. He's a marvelous, wonderful guy. Uh, and I have to find my shaku for a very important reason. And I'm wondering where they went. They're not underneath your keyboard, Sensei. They're, they're in the usual place. I didn't think I'd put them there. I thought I had them more closely at hand. But uh, this is the Kujirajaku. And this is the Kane Jaku. Remember, they're eight to 10. They're eight to 10. The Kane Jaku is eight, is eight tenths the height of the Kujira Jaku. Well, I found out the other day the Shin Daisu is measured with the Kane Jaku. It's three Kane Jaku across and 14 deep. Well, I didn't think it was necessary to measure the height. I mean, it can be any height, as long as you can get the Hishaku and the Hibashi out of the Shakutate. But it turns out, ladies and gentlemen, that it is 1.8 Shaku Kujira. Does that drive you crazy? Now, that together has a special reading, those two kanji together. It's hachi, and then a special kanji that is ata. And it's shaku with a square and two little lines making an H. It means just a shaku just a shaku. 
which means it's probably meaning this one, the big one. And it's eight, because it's lacquer, and lacquers use kujira. So this is 18 bu kujira, juhachi. Now, yata is important. Yata, anyway, I won't go into that. Yata karasu, the three legged black crow, symbolic of the sun. That's how big he is. She is yata. And the mirror is yata kagami. So this yata is really quite important. It's not just happening, it's just doesn't happen to be. But to measure it with kane, the sides, but its height is using the kujira and the kane to make it juhachi. And you know my, my thoughts on juhachi makes the character for tree, which is the symbol for life. Juhachi, futaoki, juhachi. Uh, Chas Kin, sorry, not Chak Kin. Sorry, I got excited there. <laughs> the Natsume, right? So I think it's tea time. I'm going to go into the tea room. Yeah, and if others want to join in on sound and video for with us for tea, that'd be wonderful. Now, I'm not doing Temai, I'm just going to be making tea. So don't say, oh my God, what did he do that? What is he doing there? Remember, men over 60 can use their fuksas to open the kama. The reason I'm doing this way is because I'm sort of influenced by the manner in which tea is drunk at Ken Ninji and other places, other Buddhist temples that do celebrate the uh, Yotsugashira and drink tea in that style. Thank you, Sensei. Um, we, yeah, we have a couple more questions. Um, 
there's a phrase I, I'm not familiar with it, but uh, I'm interested in it. Is uh, shini so ari, the idea of having something so within a shin temai? Um, can you touch probably? On? Okay. <laughs> right. Uh, within shin kyo and so, as I said earlier, shin no shin, only Iyamoto does shin no shin. Shin no gyo, sh, gyo, sorry, gyo no shin, gyo no gyo, and gyo no so. So no shin, so no gyo, and there's no so no so. Oh, I'm seeing my friends, meaning you, for the first time right now. So, Anthony, <laughs> let's go on to some other question. I see you're all drinking. Hi, Tom. Another question is, uh, asking if you can talk a little bit about the gyo and so level daisu temais. Well, we ordinarily in the progress of studying tea at Urasenke, there are certain temai that we are taught. And uh, the gyo level, we are taught gyo no gyo daisu. And that means that it is theoretically a Chinese tea bowl, even though all of them were made in Japan, because the Chinese ones, well, my song bowl, which is right here, I acquired this from Jim, well, James, Lally and company. I was their first customer when they opened uh, the, the shop in uh, Manhattan. Jim and Helen, uh, I worked with them at uh, Park Burnett, which became Sotheby's and then Jim and Helen began a marvelous, extraordinary company dealing in Chinese, uh, primarily Chinese, antiquities. And uh, I was their first customer. And it was in the neighborhood of a thousand dollars. And that was about maybe 20 years ago, something like that. So they are there. There are countless bowls. Uh, not so many chaide, but they they do come from Song, and I had to uh, look into my veracity and uh, apologize for saying they don't exist in China. For some reason, they are not extraordinarily popular and uh, displayed in museums. Chaide, those the bunin or the the katatsuki, or, but they were made and they find them, but somehow, hi. <laughs> yeah, but she's not, fan she, well, baby is not, is not fanning. It's gesticulating, getting my attention. You know, when the, when the priest comes along and whacks you on your uh, shoulders and yeah, you see, I get distracted very easily, so. Adam, question. <laughs> oh, gyo no gyo. Um, daisu temai, probably any daisu temai is going to do daisu usucha. You would just have the daisu, put the dogu out. Uh, usually it's a set, mizusashi, shakutate, kensui, and futaoki. But you see that my set is gathering pieces together. And I, if this existed in China, I don't think it did. Not this way, not this way. I see somebody shaking, no. Uh, the bowls existed, there are pictures of, pictures of. But somehow, well, Jim, from whom James Lally, uh, said he thinks that the Chaides were are really a Japanese 
creation, but they do exist in China. I found some sites, you know, without, without the internet, you'd be looking at a blank wall. <laughs> I could not do what I do without it. You know, it can be a curse, especially when it doesn't function properly. That almost never happens. Yeah. Uh, I have uh, someone out there is a Francoma collector, or at least fancier. And this is my Senzara from the Wagon Wheel collection. I used to wear cowboy boots and teach uh, line dancing to Japanese ladies at uh, Showa. And so it's got eight spokes. So it's my Senzara for my little bit less than most formal. But here's the Chakin, the Shin Chakin because it's used in the Shin Temai. You know, the character for uh, Fuku, Fukusa, Fukusa is white cloth and Fuku Sa, that Sa is gauze. Well, I can almost see you through this. So I wonder sometimes if this wasn't the Fuksa and, and it just got changed along the way. Uh, you know your fuxa, shioze, the fabric is shioze. Actually, I left mine in there doing tea. Shioze, usually this is shioze. Well, I thought, oh, it's because of, I think I told you this the last time, because it has little ridges. It's kind of like the, the sea floor has little ridges of sand. No, it was the guy's name who created this kind of fabric. Sometimes a little knowledge can lead you right down the wrong path. Okay. Anthony? Uh, yeah, well. Um, Are we 108%? <laughs> almost, but uh, maybe a quick one here. Um, you said you, you didn't use the tobacco bone today. Um, and you said because it's a formal occasion, it is. Is that uh, something that's generally not done when you do a shin uh, tea gathering? Uh, no tobacco bone? Or is I it don't really... know. Okay. I don't know. I felt it was slightly too informal. Hmm. Uh, smoking. Uh, tobacco. Uh, next time is uh, Shinto and holidays. And uh, I was going to do incense today, but you know, I don't have anything to fill the gap. So uh, I put it off until next time. And um, incense is really interesting about what Shingyo So might be, if there is such a thing in the incense itself. The presentations, I studied a tiny bit with the Shino school of incense. And you think we're fussy. Their, their fussy is miniaturized. And uh, it's wonderful, but in spite of the fact of my large nose, I still cannot distinguish one from the other. I've won a few prizes only because I think people were less skilled than I am. But uh, anyway, so incense the next time. And uh, it's really interesting. The Buddha smelled of sandalwood. One of the grades of koboku, incense wood, is that it smells like a cloth. I don't know that I should tell you this, but they told me, um, is like the smell of a cloth that a samurai used to wipe his body. Uh, those of you who work hard and work up a sweat and you're post-adolescent, there are traces of uh, that you've been busy. So, and what's wrong with that? I think I told you this story, it bears repeating because it shows my stupidity. I read a lot when I was younger and uh, Colette was one of my very favorite writers, not in French. And um, Cherie, her lover, uh, half her age minus, uh, smelled of sandalwood. So when I was in Paris, I was looking for sandalwood 
perfume. No. The Buddha smelled of sandalwood. He didn't get Fabergé cologne on him. He smelled it. The wood used for his funeral pyre was sandalwood. And sandalwood is uh, uh, a parasite. It parasitizes through the roots. So not many plants will grow around it. Interesting. Uh, crown of thorns, uh, natsume. Natsume, if you take the two kanji that make up natsume, there's two thorns and you put one on top of the other and that's natsume, but you put them side by side and it's thorns. It's thought that the crown of thorns was actually natsume because it's very thorny. Help. <laughs> well, <laughs> that was really, an interesting, really. Sensei. Uh, we're coming towards the end of, of the lecture here. So I and I've I think I've muted a few people during the question and answer, but maybe we can all come off of mute and uh, give a thanks to uh, Sensei all together in the gallery view. Hey. Sensei. Thank you, 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 Sensei.